Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Kais G701 heated motorcycle gloves. Keeping your hands warm on a bike is one of the trickiest tasks in motorcycling, and I think the most surefire solution in the coldest weather is a pair of heated gloves like these, as they surround your hands with electrically generated heat, which ideally stops your fingers freezing off. So these Kais G701 heated gloves are among the newest additions to the heated glove market, and I'll run through what makes them tick for you and give you my experience of using them out and about in some really cold weather. So first, let's go through the main construction and get that out of the way. They're made from a combination of ballistic spandex and synthetic leather. The ballistic spandex covers the back of the hand and then the synthetic leather covers the palm area. This is reinforced in key areas. There's synthetic suede where the hands wrap around the bars by the finger and thumb just here. And then there's a grippy panel which covers the pads for the rest of the fingers. There's a hard plastic panel just here at the heel of the palm, which is there to encourage your hands to slide out from under your body if you're unlucky enough to have an accident, and that reduces the risk of broken bones in your wrist. There's extra silicon just up here near the tips of the fingers, which helps with grips on the levers. And then you've got these touchscreen overlays across here on the finger and the thumb, so you can use your phone while you're wearing the gloves. In my experience, these overlays worked really well and they made it very easy to use my phone. The gloves fasten with a conventional twin closure. It's a Velcro wrist strap and also a Velcro cuff wrap just here. On this gauntlet section, there's the zip up pouch to house the optional batteries, which I'll cover shortly. The back of the hand has a hard knuckle protector, which is CE approved alongside the rest of the glove. And there's also the power switch and heat level controller, which is on the back of the hand just here. Then on the left forefinger, there's a plastic wipe to clear off rain from your visor. It's quite stubby, but a couple of swipes helps get the rain off. I used it this morning in very wet conditions and that was just fine. On the inside, there's a Hippora waterproof membrane and that's semi-bonded to the outer to make sure it doesn't come out when you take your hand out of the glove. Then there's a layer of Thinsulate material inside which helps to both spread the heat that's generated by the powered elements and it also stops that heat radiating too quickly out into the atmosphere and making it too cold inside the gloves. So these gloves have a similar thickness to a pair of regular non-heated winter motorcycle gloves. They're certainly not the thickest of winter gloves. So that extra feel that you get is one added benefit of going for heated gloves. They're not quite as thick as those really chunky winter gloves. These are approved to the basic level one of the CE safety standard, including the KP mark that shows the knuckle armor actually protects against impacts. So right, let's get on to what really separates these gloves from a regular pair of gloves, and that's the heating. Heating panels cover the backs of the hands and they also go over the top of the fingers. It's what Kais call microcarbon heating and I couldn't feel anything different about wearing these gloves compared to a regular pair of bike gloves other than the fact that they were chucking some heat at me. If they'd not been plugged in and switched on then I really wouldn't have known they were any different to normal bike gloves and I mean that in a good way. I mean I couldn't feel any wires or any extra bulk around my hands or fingers. There are three different sources of power you can choose from. You can power these gloves from the bike, a battery that you keep in your jacket pocket, or from batteries that you tuck into the gloves themselves. As standard, the gloves come with the connection leads that you need to power them from the bike. There's a wiring harness that connects to your bike battery, and then you plug a Y-shaped cable into that, feed it through the sleeves of your jacket, and then it pokes out through the cuffs here, and you plug those ends into the sockets on the gloves just here, and you've got power. If you've got a Kais heated jacket, then it's a little bit easier as there are cables in the jacket sleeves just here that then emerge through the sleeves of your jacket and then plug just here to bring power from the bike through the jacket to the gloves. If you have got an older Kais jacket though and you want to match these gloves to it, you might need a pair of adapters which cost about a fiver. So the second option is to use one of the two types of portable rechargeable battery. The first type, you plug that Y cable into that battery and then you tuck the battery into your jacket pocket. There are two different capacities of those batteries, but realistically, I think more people are likely to use these batteries, which tuck into the cuff of the glove and then they emerge through this zipped pocket here and they provide power there. So you've got those direct to your hands. It makes it much easier to use them than having a battery in your pocket. We found that these batteries lasted between three and six hours, depending on the heat setting that we chose, and it took four hours to fully recharge them again afterwards. So once you've got power feeding through to the gloves, however you do it, you press and hold this switch just here to turn them on. And then you tap 
through, tap that button again to cycle through the different heat levels. Red is the hottest, the middle setting is orange, and then green is the lowest setting. So as well as testing the lifespan of those batteries, I did an experiment where I connected these gloves to a 12 volt bike battery and then switched them onto the highest heat setting and left them in my garden with a temperature probe inside to see how hot it got in there. After 10 minutes, the glove was 30 degrees warmer than the ambient temperature, and then it gained another two degrees of Celsius over the next 20 minutes. So that, to my mind, is quite a serious amount of heat inside a glove. So that's all the tech stuff covered. Now I can give you my experience of riding in these gloves. These made riding on a very, very cold November day feel actually pretty damn comfortable. The temperature was down around two or three degrees Celsius when I was out in these gloves and my hands felt absolutely fine. I had them switched on from the very beginning, so I didn't really need them to bring my hands up to temperature, they just maintained a nice, steady warmth. I didn't even need to have them on the highest setting, but then it's good to know that there is another setting available for longer rides than the hour that I was out, and also for those really bloody cold days. But if you read through the reviews of any heated clothing, there are always people who say it doesn't get warm enough. Some people just feel the cold really badly, and also some think heated kit will make a winter's day feel like summer in paradise. There's only so much heated kit can do, and in my experience, it turns painfully cold days into something much more comfortable. That's really what it's there to do. It's not there to make you feel like you're riding in an oven. As for how these are to use compared to a regular pair of unpowered gloves, having the cable running through the jacket to get that power there is a bit of a fiddle. It's easier with the batteries, but that's actually quite a minor issue and it's much more minor than riding in really, really cold temperatures with no protection. There are plenty of other good points about these gloves too. Having the power button here on the back of the hand means you can tuck the cuffs of these gloves inside your jacket and you can still get to the control button. Believe it or not, there are plenty of gloves where you can't do that. And actually you should have the cuffs tucked under your jacket sleeve if you're riding in the rain as you need to protect the plugs and connections from getting wet and also you don't want rain running inside the gloves. If you run the gloves with the batteries like these tucked into the cuffs, it means you don't need to worry about all of that cabling trailing down through your jacket but you do need to know that your jacket sleeve is gonna be wide enough to go over what actually ends up being quite a fairly bulky glove cuff once the battery's in place just there. You also want to know that your batteries will have enough life for you to reach your destination, and also that when you get there, you're gonna have somewhere to charge them up again, and also that you've got enough time to charge them up before you head out into the cold. So let's talk about the costs. As we record this video, these gloves are 195 pounds and that includes the leads that you need to get power from your bike. If you want the batteries, these ones that tuck into the cuffs, they cost an extra 79 pounds, which includes the charger. If you want one of those single batteries that you then keep in your jacket, then it's either 74 pounds or 104 pounds, depending on the capacity of the battery, and both of those also include the charger. So finally, let's cover sizing. The G701 gloves come in sizes extra small to double extra large, which suits palms with a circumference from six inches up to 13 inches. You can find the size guide on the listing on our site, which is linked from the description below. I wore my usual size, a medium, and I found these gloves to be very comfortable. A few years ago, heated gloves were kind of rough bike gloves with some nice warm bits inside. You had to tolerate the lack of quality in the outer glove to get the benefit of that heat that was coming through from the inside. Thankfully, times have changed, and these gloves, as well as quite a few other options on the market now, are actually decent bike gloves in their own right. And the fact that they're heated just takes them up to a higher level. I hope that explains everything you wanted to know about the Kais G701 heated gloves. But if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.